Well, finally, let's jump from earthquakes now to this, this new phenomena called episodic tremor and slip. This was only really discovered uh, about 10 years ago, first in Japan, but then it turns out that Cascadia has this phenomenon and is really a great laboratory for looking at it. And so there are a number of different groups. In fact, there's a whole presentation section tomorrow at the SSA on this phenomenon. Now, I'm a seismologist, so episodic tremor and slip. I'm going to start off describing tremor as a seismological effect. I showed you seismograms previously of one station with over a long period of time. In this case, it's seismograms from many stations for only a couple of minutes period of time. So they're all at the same time period. And this is an example of a typical small earthquake. It arrives first on this one sort of in the middle, uh, labeled NCW, and then you see it on other stations that are further away from that one as a relatively impulsive, sharp beginning that dies out over a period of you know, 10 to maybe 20 seconds. This is a typical earthquake. This is what a seismologist loves to study. Well, most of the time, these are not going on. Most of the time, we have what you might call background noise. Noise not in the sense that you hear, but the seismologist sees this as sort of just a random motions that are typically in the ground all the time, generated by wind, by ocean waves, by trucks, by people, by, by distant earthquakes. It's just the background, you might say, hum of the earth. And most of the time, this is what it is. It's very boring. Well, it turns out, some of the time, if you filter this into a narrow band, it actually becomes very interesting. You have to squint your eyes a little bit and sort of say, well, there's this zone here that there is quite a bit of a little bit of extra energy, not quite a bit, a little bit of extra energy on all these stations roughly during the same period of time. Not like an earthquake, but there's something there. Well, if you do some more sophisticated processing, you can actually determine something about the location of where this type of constant wiggle, and that's why we call it tremor. It's like tremors and it may last anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, or in some cases, even longer. But it's not individual earthquakes, or if they are individual earthquakes, they're little tiny guys that are just back to back, occurring so fast, one after another, that it looks like a continuous source. So that's the tremor part of this episodic tremor and slip. Let's talk about slip. To do that, we'll back up and talk about plate subduction. The oceanic plate descending under North America. That's what's taking place right under us here. Uh, the, the Juan de Fuca plate from its spreading center way off the coast moves slowly and descends under North America, but not constantly. In that view, the zone as it goes down under the continental slope, you might call the Cascadia Fault. It's the contact between the oceanic plate and the North American plate. But that contact is dipping down. It's not vertical. It sort of dips at an angle under North America. Well, to, to, to look at what's going on here, we, we put out uh, global positioning system uh, stations. These are GPS stations, very much like you might have in your car or handheld that you walk around to tell you where you are, except that these are very, very accurate. They use a lot of sophisticated technology in order to locate themselves to within a few millimeters relative to one another. Well, if you then have this oceanic plate impinging on North America, and it's at a rate of about four centimeters a year, about the speed your fingernails grow, it's pushing against North America, but it's stuck. And it's stuck in this fault zone going from where the fault cuts the surface inland at an angle down under the coast. We call this the locked zone. This is the zone that, when it goes, generates a massive earthquake, maybe magnitude 9. So most of the time, luckily right now, it's stuck, and we're not having earthquakes. But what it's doing is squeezing the western side of North America, and we can measure that with these GPS instruments. They are moving slightly to the east, the further east you go, the less the motion. So just like a spring, it's pushing in. There's more motion out where it's locked, less as you go inland. And this is this, the, the status quo. That's what's going on actually right now in this part of the world. 
Well, every now and then, for a short period of time, maybe a week, two weeks, maybe as many as three weeks, some of these stations go the other way. They turn around and are moving back. Well, this can be modeled, and it's understood that, that if the source of this is down where this contact is, down at the bottom of the locked zone, this is like a small earthquake that doesn't take place all at once, but rather is spread out over two to three weeks period of time. You can model that over what area it, uh, it occurs and how much the motion is, just a few centimeters, during one of these, these events. And if you said, okay, that's like the failure in an earthquake, and you compressed it all into the same time period, i.e. a few seconds that it takes an earthquake to fail, that would be the equivalent of a magnitude 6 earthquake. So there's the slip part. So we've got the tremor and slip. What about the episodic part? Well, let's tie them together first. Let's look now on the, on the side. Here is the locked zone going from off the coast down to what we now call the transition zone, something between the locked zone and the slip, slipping part. We've for a long time thrown that in, but not really understood what it meant. Now we think that somehow the transition zone may be an area where you have, it's partially locked some of the time, but some of the time it actually slips a little bit back the other way, at least part of the transition zone. Well, the periodic part can be shown by, uh, oh, I, I should mention the, the deep tremor. Let's tie them together. The tremor, when you can locate it, appears to be somewhere near where this transition zone slippage is occurring, either just on that surface or perhaps uh, above it somewhere. And there's continuing controversy on how much of it is where within that zone because it's very hard to locate. This tremor is not like earthquakes. They're easy to do. It's much more difficult to do so. So this is one of the interesting things that we're trying to study these days is to get a much better handle on where this stuff takes place. Okay, let's really do go to the, uh, the, the time sequence. This is a record of the GPS motion at one station located in, in southern uh, Vancouver Island near Victoria and the eastward component of it. And uh, in the top part, you see the red lines are these lines that are roughly 14 months long in which it's moving to the east. At the end of that period, it jumps back to the, to, the, to the west just a little bit, and then it starts its march again. So this, this transition back down again, as I say, is, doesn't last very long, a few weeks at the most. Well, down at the bottom is a record showing the, uh, the periods that tremor was observed in this same general area. It's not going on all the time, but if you look through all the records, and I think I see Gary Rogers, one of the guys that looked at all this and is plotted up, his name is on the slide there, uh, determined that these things take place pretty much at the same time that these slip events occur, and in a very regular pattern. Here is a repeating event again. Well, it was so regular, roughly every 14 plus months, that you could use that regularity to predict additional ETSs, additional episodic tremor and slip events, and I'll make a prediction today. The next one will occur this summer. Probably sort of the first couple of weeks of uh, August, plus or minus maybe a month. But that's uh, the next one of these regular cycles. And indeed, lots of us are gearing up to put out specialized instruments to look at the next one of these, these uh, slow slip, tremor producing events. Well, most of us have studied this in a lot of detail, and the, the, the group at, uh, and the, that's from the Geological Survey of Canada uh, in Victoria has done uh, a lot of the work, particularly on the geodetic side of this, but all up and down, lots of people are getting in the game now, and it's now known that it doesn't just occur in southern Vancouver Island, northern Washington, but in fact, it actually covers pretty much all of Cascadia. And even this little zone in this plot in central Oregon that's missing is filled in if you look at a long enough period of time. 